Where do they come from? Not from your butter. They came from vegetable oils, from your margarine and your butter replacements, and all the processed foods you ate, which are full of these things, your crisps, your chips, and other things fried in vegetable oil. Fats and cholesterol in the plaque are not the real cholesterol and real fat that is in the egg yolk and in butter. They are chemically mutilated, damaged molecules. They are damaged by the immune system, by the inflammation. In order to repair the tissue, the blood will keep bringing these molecules into that area, but the inflammation attacks them immediately with free radicals because immune cells use free radicals as guns and bullets to fight the enemy. They damage this cholesterol, they damage these fats, and they become useless. The body cannot use them. So they just dumped in the middle of that rubbish pile inside your arterial wall. This is the picture of the atherosclerotic plaque. That is where the blood flows. That is the middle of the artery. You see how narrow it become? And that is the plaque. You see on top of this plaque, we have the bandage. That is collagen that repair system has built to separate this rubbish tip, this rubbish pile, from the bloodstream. And that's the rubbish pile. You see, full of damaged cells, broken down collagen, broken down immune cells, foam cells, and broken down cholesterol and fat. That's what it is. Obviously, in this person, inflammation is winning. Because inflammation, if it would go away and repair would win, it will dissolve all this, remove it all. And, the, and this, the, the, the middle of the artery become, will become wide again and the blood will flow again in there. So what are the fats and cholesterol really doing in there? They are healing agents in the body, essential for both inflammation and repair. Remember, your immune system is largely made out of cholesterol and saturated fat, and it requires a lot of these substances to fight, to work. And repair need them to build new tissues, to give birth to new cells. So both of them need these substances. That is why every time you have a surgery, your blood cholesterol will be high because the liver is working hard to send these healing substances to your wound, to repair it. And what is your doctor going to do? Put you on statins, right? <laughs> Every time you went to a dentist, your blood cholesterol will be high because things are damaged in your mouth after visiting a dentist. They need healing. They need repairing. Cholesterol will be delivered to your gums, to your mouth, to repair those tissues. Every time you have stress, severe stress, you'll have high blood cholesterol because stress hormones need to be manufactured and because a lot of damage was caused by stress in the body. Stress is very destructive in the body. So many situations in life will require high blood cholesterol. That is why I'm telling you, never ever test it, please. Tell your doctor, no, thank you, I'm all right. I don't want to know. Because you don't want to know. Because if your doctor finds that your blood cholesterol is slightly higher than they think it should be, you'll be under pressure to go on the statins and they will give you a lot of fear. They're good at creating fear in their patients. I'm a medical doctor, I know how it works. LDL, or so-called bad cholesterol, takes cholesterol from the liver to the damaged artery. HDL, or so-called good cholesterol, returns cholesterol from the artery back to the liver to be recycled. But it gets damaged by free radicals in the wound, as I said, because the immune system uses inflammation is a place where there's lots of free radicals, because this is, what, this is the weapons of the immune system, free radicals. HDL cholesterol carries uh, antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, lipoic acid, and other which can repair cholesterol. Those damaged, oxidized molecules of cholesterol in the plaque can be repaired by antioxidants. Chemically damaged, oxidized cholesterol and fats get deposited in the plaque. So this 
are the things that are useless for the body. They cannot be repaired. Let's introduce you to the real cause of heart disease and epidemic in the Western world, in the so-called civilized world. It isn't cholesterol, it isn't fats. It is metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? High level of insulin in your blood. That is metabolic syndrome. Any person who is walking about constantly with high levels of insulin in their blood have chronic inflammation in their body everywhere. Because wherever inflammation is initiated, it cannot stop because insulin will not allow it to stop. So the real cause of heart disease epidemic is sugar, bread, breakfast cereals, pasta, vegetable oils, biscuits, cakes, and other processed and soft drinks. Other processed carbohydrates that Western population is gorging on. That's what they eat, day in and day out, and they think it's all right. <laughs> that is the cause of cancer, autoimmune disease, of mental illness, of heart disease, atherosclerosis, diabetes, and every other disease in the Western world, in the modern world. Because they cause a glucose overload in the body. Human body has not been designed to get such huge amounts of one particular molecule. If you eat carbohydrates in a natural state, the way Mother Nature gave them to us, raw fruit, raw vegetables, raw grains, they're very difficult to digest. In fact, they're indigestible for the human digestive system. And most carbohydrate that's in them is indigestible. It goes through us, it doesn't absorb, doesn't digest, finishes up in your bowel, where the microbes in your bowel work on it. They digest it, and they manufacture, they convert all those carbohydrates, more than 75, 80% of them, into short chain fatty acids, which are fully saturated fat. So when we eat natural plants in a natural state, we digest them as saturated fat. They absorb, they feed our immune system, they feed our brain, they support us between meals. But generally speaking, high up, plants are indigestible. But what our industry does, it makes them very, very, very digestible by processing them. Flour is a highly processed carbohydrate, wheat flour. And then from this processed carbohydrate, we make bread, pasta, biscuits, cakes, and the rest of it making them even more processed. They cause glucose overload in the body and overproduction of insulin. You finish up with high level of insulin in your blood all the time. That is what our doctors should be testing, not cholesterol. When they take your sample of blood, they should test insulin in your bloodstream and C-reactive protein for the marker of inflammation to see if you have got systemic inflammation in the body. These are the two things they should be testing, all of you, not cholesterol. Overproduction of insulin leads to insulin resistance in the body. That is diabetes, that's basically another name for diabetes. Too much insulin leads to permanent inflammation, and perpetual inflammation is the cause of atherosclerosis, and heart disease, and cancer, and everything else. So what are the real causes of heart disease epidemic? Number one, metabolic syndrome, high insulin in your bloodstream. Number two, anything that can cause injury to your endothelium. That's a number two. That is a less important cause. And here we have man-made chemicals, personal care products, laundry dishwasher detergents, domestic cleaning chemicals, your redecoration building materials, pharmaceuticals, smoking, industrial pollution, agricultural chemicals, tap water full of chlorine, fluoride, and other chemicals, processed foods, microbes. Many microbes have been found inside atherosclerotic plaque. These are microbes usually which come from chronic inflammation, chronic uh, infection places in your body, such as your root canal in your teeth. 
There is no such thing as a clean root canal. They do not exist. Every root canal is infected. And chlamydia pneumonia, H. pylori, cytomegalovirus, and all these other microbes have been found in the atherosclerotic plug. They probably caused the wound, started the process in there, and because the person is living on processed carbohydrates, they have high levels of insulin in the body, pro-inflammatory state, they develop atherosclerosis. Abnormal gut flora. A person with abnormal gut flora has a river of toxicity flowing from the gut into the bloodstream. These toxins will cause injury to your arteries, to your endothelium, and start the process in there. Nutritional deficiencies, the homocysteine, for example, uh, this is a, a very damaging molecule that appears in your blood when we are deficient in B vitamins, B12, B6, folate in particular, and zinc. And recently we've added magnesium to that, and we've added something else to that, coenzyme Q10. LPA is another substance when we're deficient in vitamin C. It appears in the bloodstream. You know that sauerkraut provides you with 20 times more bioavailable vitamin C than the same helping of fresh cabbage. You Germans should know this, and Switzerland people as well. Because in a fresh cabbage, vitamin C is locked in the cellular structure, and your digestive system is unable to digest it. It can't extract it. But when we ferment cabbage to make sauerkraut, the bacteria in the fermentation release vitamin C from the cellular structure into the whole mixture. So when you're eating sauerkraut, you're getting plenty of vitamin C, large amounts of it. You know that uh, famous British explorer, James Cook, who discovered Australia, New Zealand, and half the world? He had barrels of sauerkraut on his ships. That is why his, uh, so the, his sailors never had scurvy. They never had vitamin C deficiency because they ate fermented cabbage. That was a, a little detour. Okay, lack of sun exposure leading to vitamin D deficiency is a cause and other. Radiation, electromagnetic pollution, stress, sedentary lifestyle. But what you need to understand that we humans were always exposed to many of these factors throughout our existence on our planet, through millions of years. Because we had volcanoes exploding, climate was changing, lots of things were changing on the planet. We always had pollution, we always had stress, we always had to deal with these situations. They are not the cause of heart disease. Smoking doesn't cause heart disease on its own. I know many people in their 90s who smoked like chimneys all their life. They're fine. You know why? Because they don't eat sugar. And they don't eat bread. They eat eggs and butter and bacon for breakfast. That is why they're healthy. The cause of heart disease is metabolic syndrome. If you don't have that in your body, you, your body can process many chemicals, many toxins, many things, and you will not get atherosclerosis. In order to get it, you need metabolic syndrome. So, what do we need to do to protect ourselves from heart disease? Avoid processed carbohydrates. Sugar this is the biggest poison in the world, and it is a number one addictive substance in the world. It is more addictive than morphine, heroin, cannabis, or anything else. It is the most addictive substance. Breakfast cereals, poisonous. Don't put them in your mouth. Horrid stuff. Breads, pastries, pasta, biscuits, cookies, soft drinks, poisonous, crisps, popcorn, commercial snacks, ready meals, condiments, sweets, chocolates, and so on. What do we need to eat to pr protect ourselves from heart disease? All meals should be cooked at home from natural ingredients. If it doesn't look like what Mother Nature made, don't buy it. Buy fresh vegetables and fruit, buy fresh meat, fresh butter, fresh eggs, the best quality, from a farmer, preferably. All fish cooked from fresh or frozen. Organ meats. Organ meats are an absolute panacea for every disease. Liver, kidneys, tongue, heart, brains. 
If you eat these foods on a regular basis, you will prevent any nutritional deficiency in your body. And if your body is well fed, properly nourished, it will deal with everything else. You don't need to know. It will deal with pollution. It will deal with everything else. But if you don't feed your body properly, then it cannot cope. Organ meats must be a regular part of every human being's diet. Good quality eggs. We want eggs from chickens which are in the sunshine. Only then will they have vitamin D in their egg yolks. If chickens are locked in a barn, in cages, they have no vitamin D in their egg yolks. And the yellow color comes from a chemical that they add to their feed, a colorant. If they didn't add that yellow colorant into the feed of the chickens, their egg yolks will be pale. They will not be yellow. Yellow color comes from grass that chickens eat. So chickens must be on pasture, not on a concrete floor. On grass, in the sunshine, free ranging. Then they will find most of their food. An egg is almost pure protein and fat. Chickens on pasture find their own food, grubs, worms, insects. Chickens eat a lot of meat in the form of insects and worms and grubs and other things. This is the kind of eggs we're talking about. This is the kinds of eggs we want to find. <clears throat> fresh vegetables and fresh fruit, we want them organic because animals have a powerful detoxification systems. Whatever chemicals they're exposed to, their detox system will handle many of these chemicals, neutralize them. So it is actually safer to eat non-organic meat than to eat a carrot that has been sprayed directly. Because vegetables and fruit don't have a detox system in them. So organic fruit and vegetables are really important. Meat doesn't have to be organic. Because it's expensive, many people find it too expensive to buy. Nuts and seeds, again, they shouldn't be roasted, coated in any chemicals. Buy them in their shells, crack them at home, make them an important part of your diet. Natural. Fermented dairy and raw milk, we talked about it today. Honey and dried fruit. Mother Nature gave us two wonderful sweetness. Why do we need sugar? Why do we need aspartame, which causes multiple sclerosis? Why do we need xylitol, which is an alcohol? And many other commercial sweetness. Honey will sweeten anything for you beautifully. When you have your cup of coffee, put some honey in it. When you're baking a cake, put some honey in it, or dates, dried fruit. They will sweeten your baking beautifully for you. Honey is a food that is made by nature. It is balanced. Every molecule of sugar in it, the sweetness in it, is balanced with magnesium, with chromium, with proteins, with, with other things. So your body can process it healthily, and it will only benefit you. Sugar is not a natural molecule. It isn't a natural substance. Because in order for the human body to metabolize one molecule of sugar, we need 56 molecules of magnesium. We need dozens of chromium. We need zinc. We need enzymes. We need proteins. We need fats. When we take, where does the sugar come from? From sugar cane and sugar beet. When we take a piece of fresh sugar cane or a piece of fresh sugar beet, analyze them in the laboratory, we find that indeed every molecule of sugar in these natural foods are equipped with 56 molecules of magnesium and all those molecules of chromium and zinc and enzymes and all the other things. So when we chew sugar cane as it is, we get it in a complex and it does us only good, it's healthy. But we don't do that, do we? We take sugar cane and sugar beet to a big factory, we take the sugar out of them and we throw everything else away. And this sugar comes into your body like a villain, like a highway robber. It needs those 56 molecules of magnesium. Where are they going to come from? From your muscles, from your brain, from your heart, from your bones. And every one of those tissues will suffer and develop disease. In order for your arteries to contract, they need calcium. In order to relax, they need magnesium. If you had a sugary breakfast cereal, your arteries are contracting nicely, but they can't relax. So your blood pressure goes up. 
Almost 100% of our blood pressure epidemic is due to sugar consumption and processed carbohydrates. These people have severe magnesium deficiency. That is why they have high blood pressure. In older people, the arteries become sclerotic, particularly in the brain, and your body has to think about all the organs. So it will raise your blood pressure in order to feed the brain properly. Of course, our cardiologists don't think about the brain. They only focus on the heart, don't they? So they say, oh, this high blood pressure is too hard for your heart. You must take tablets to reduce your blood pressure. The person starts taking these tablets, next week, bang, stroke. The person dies from a stroke. More than 60% of our strokes are caused by cardiologists prescribing blood pressure medications. Whatever your blood pressure is, is the right blood pressure for you. There is no such thing as the right blood pressure. Whatever your individual blood pressure is, is the right blood pressure for you. Don't interfere with it. Whole grains in moderation. Whole grains need to be prepared properly. In Switzerland, we had a community and a Lointile village in, in the valley, which was studied extensively because it was a traditional community and it didn't have the modern civilization reaching it yet. In order to prepare bread, it took them two weeks to prepare bread. And the loaves were this big, and then they will hang them, and they will last them for a long time. Grains have many anti-nutrients in them, substances which damage human body. Lectins, phytates, oxalates, salicylates, and other things. They are very harmful for the human body, and they're indigestible. That is why all traditional cultures developed ways of pre-digesting grains. Fermentation is the most important thing to do with grains. Grains need to be fermented for a long time before we make bread from them. Because the bacteria in the fermentation process break down lectins, break down phytates, break down gluten, and break down other substances in the grains. When you make a proper sourdough bread, which does take a few days to, to make, to prepare, that will digest well in your body and will do you only good. That's the only bread that we human beings should be eating. But of course our food industry doesn't do that. They prepare processed concoctions for us, shaped in the form of bread, and we believe that that's bread. That's not bread. That is a poison. Beans and pulses, the same, have many anti-nutrients. They're very difficult to digest. That is why they need to be properly prepared before we eat them. Fermentation is an important part, and simply soaking. All traditional cultures will soak their beans for 24 hours, then wash them very well, then cook them, then probably ferment them a little in the cooked form, and only then they will eat them. Because they knew that in that form they're more digestible, they feed us a little bit more, and they do not damage our digestive systems. Natural fats, we talked about it a lot today. The best fats for consuming for human body are animal fats, and they're the best fats for cooking. If you roasted a duck, your duck will be sitting in fat that high. Pour that liquid fat through a sieve into a glass jar and keep it in the fridge. It'll last for half a year. And do all your frying and cooking on this fat. Tomorrow you cooked some pork, you'll have another jar. After tomorrow you cooked lamb, you have another jar. Very soon you'll finish up with a collection of jars in your fridge with lots of animal fats. They're all very healthy, very good for us. And they can be heated and reheated many times because they're stable. They don't get damaged by heat the same way the plant oils uh, get damaged. These are the only fats that we should be cooking on. If you want your chips, if you want to you fry your potatoes, you fry them on this fat and they'll be healthy for you instead of vegetable oils. Butter and ghee should be consumed and we can cook on them. Coconut oil is a fully saturated fat. And it has many, many health benefits for the human body. That is why uh, people in the tropics and other places always cooked on coconut oils. Until, of course, our modern propaganda reached them and started supplying them with genetically modified soya oil, which replaced coconut oil in their cooking. <coughs> Cold-pressed virgin olive oil, 
Olive oil is quite stable because it's largely made out of monounsaturated fatty acid called oleic acid. But the value of it is not in the oleic acid. The value of the olive oil is in the micronutrients which give it green color and spicy taste. Phytonutrients, antioxidants, phenols, salicylates and other things. These things kill cancer. They detoxify your body, they cleanse your body, they provide many good things. When we cook olive oil, we destroy them. We're just left with the oleic acid, nothing else. That is why I don't recommend cooking with olive oil. I recommend buying good quality olive oil, really good quality, cold extracted, and using it as a dressing on ready served meals. We don't need a huge amount of it. Three tablespoons a day, maybe a bit more, will be enough to supply you with good amount of vitamin E, excellent antioxidant, and many other good things. It's very healthy in that form. Other cold pressed plant oils, flax, avocado, walnut, borash, hemp, not for cooking. And be sure that you spoke to the manufacturer and you're sure that the manufacturer is honest and they're really honestly doing their best not to damage these oils during manufacture. They are very fragile. Deficiencies in fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K are a major cause of heart disease, cancer, and every other disease. Human beings require these vitamins in ample amounts. If you're eating fat with your meal, if you're eating animal fats, then plentiful, you will be getting plenty of these um, substances, and you will prevent infections and prevent other problems. Avoid all margarines, butter replacement, and so on, and cooking oils. Digestive health. We talked about it this morning. Most toxins floating in your blood come from your digestive system. So look after your digestive system. It is important. It has become a priority for almost 100% of the Western population because we have been subjected to antibiotics for far too long and many other chemicals which damage gut flora. Large percent of the population have abnormal gut flora. Without it, food does not get digested properly. It doesn't absorb very well, so you develop multiple nutritional deficiencies and B vitamin deficit. Without B vitamins, nothing in the body works. Nutritional deficiencies lead to formation of homocysteine, Remember, in order to not have this damaging chemical, we need all the B vitamins coming from your gut flora's activity. If you don't get enough of them, you'll have this substance in your blood. It's terribly damaging. And LPA, which appears in the blood when you are deficient in vitamin C and lipoic acid. And many other toxins are formed. Every course of antibiotics must be followed by a course of probiotics and fermented foods. Fermented foods should be a part of our daily diet, all of us. And you have the traditions in your culture. Just continue with it. Prevent heart disease naturally. What do we need to do? Stop eating processed foods. Difficult, isn't it, for many people? Stop polluting your body with man-made chemicals and look after your digestive system. If you do these three things, you will have no metabolic syndrome. Your insulin will be normal in your bloodstream. And that will guarantee that your body is slim and beautiful. There is no obesity. Because insulin is a fat storage hormone in the body. If you have high levels of insulin, everything you eat will be stored as fat, converted into fat. Molecules of glucose get converted into fat. <clears throat> and you will prevent every other disease in the body, not only heart disease. This is my book, which is written in a language that anybody will understand. But it is fully referenced for the medical doctors. So if you want to give a book to your medical doctor, please give them this book. They can't argue with it because it has all the scientific studies in it. It's all referenced, but it's written in a simple to understand language so anybody can read it, not only medics. And these are my contact details. 
Thank you very much for listening. Ähm, bezüglich des gesunden Ei, ähm, Eigelbs, muss das ähm, preferably ähm, roh sein oder kann es auch äh, zum Beispiel aus gekochten Eiern stammen? Und die zweite Frage, was ist mit, mit ähm, diesem Vollrohrzucker, der ja eigentlich alle diese ähm, ähm, Mineralien und Spurenelemente auch enthalten sollte? Kann man den konsumieren oder ist der auch nicht empfehlenswert? Raw egg yolks have been compared to human breast milk. They literally require very little digestion, they absorb very quickly and they provide us with beautiful nutrition. Lots of zinc, amino acids in their single form, so your proteins can immediately be built. Lots and lots of B vitamins and lots of other wonderful things. When we cook, obviously all that nutrition is still there, but it is more difficult to digest. Cooked egg yolks are harder to digest. Many people get it repeated on them, get a reflux from it, and some people get constipated and get gas from cooked eggs. From raw eggs, you will not get that. Raw egg white recently has been discovered to chelate toxic metals. That's amazing. So we can remove, by eating raw egg whites, we can remove mercury and lead and other toxic metals out of the body. What I recommend to people when they start juicing on the GAPS nutritional protocol, You've made your glass of juice by pressing vegetables and fruit with your juicer. Break a couple of raw eggs in it, best quality, from pasture, chickens, organic. And a tablespoon of your sour cream that you've made at home from raw cream. Whisk the whole thing and that turns it into a, like a milkshake consistency. We call it GAPS milkshake. And that will remove all those stones from your liver. Improve your bile flow improve your fat digestion, clean up your liver, and remove many toxic metals and give you fantastic nutrition. Many people have it as a breakfast. Two eggs in your glass of juice, sour cream, the juice, you've drunk it, off you go. You won't be hungry until lunchtime, and you will get the best nutrition. The raw cane sugar also processes substance. It has a little bit more than an ordinary sugar, but I will not recommend it. Eat honey and eat dried fruit. These things are made by Mother Nature. They are fully balanced. They will do us only good. Okay. okay. Um, Brot. Es ist meines Erachtens sehr gefährlich. Um, wie lange muss man es mindestens fermentieren, damit es nicht gefährlich ist? Also gut für den Körper. Die Fermentation des Getreides. When gaps keep people have recovered fully and they start coming off the gaps diet. The first thing we do, we take white organic flour, white please, not with bran in it, because bran is indigestible and it has the wrong kind of fiber, it scratches, the digestive system damages it. Bran is not good. White organic flour, we add our kefir to it, homemade kefir, a bit of water, make it into a, a, a pastry, and put it in a warm place for two days. Kefir will ferment the flour, pre-digest it. It will break it apart. In two days, it will increase in volume. It will be all bubbly, sitting there, smell lovely. You bring it to your kitchen then. You add some eggs into it, mix the eggs, and you make crepes, pancakes from it, crepes. And the person has one pancake on the first day, and then we watch them for a few days what happens. If the digestive system has recovered, nothing happens. And that's a great news for the person. So we can make the pancakes a regular, that, this is sourdough pancakes, real sourdough. They will not only taste beautiful, they have a sour taste to them. If you add a bit of salt there, there will be that. After those pancakes are well tolerated, we start making bread the same way. We add kefir to flour, we add salt, we add whatever else you want to add to it, maybe sunflower seeds, maybe some nuts, maybe some sun-dried tomatoes or whatever. You knead it, you make the dough, you put it in the shape for the bread that you're going to bake, and then you put butter on top, cover it with a towel, and you put it in a warm place for two days. It has to ferment for two days. In two days, it will rise, it will become big. You put it in the oven and you bake it. And that will be your sourdough bread. Commercial sourdough bread is not prepared like that. 
and many people find it difficult to digest. So if you want to start introducing bread, start from that kind of homemade bread. I have these recipes on my website.